Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. I've got an NBA first look for you on DraftKings for Monday night games. We got a cozy little six game slate coming up this Monday night. We got Detroit against Washington. New Orleans travels to Brooklyn in what should be a high paced, high scoring affair. Plenty of value there. Good studs that we can uh, attach our lineups to as well. Milwaukee travels to Minnesota. We have a suspension there to Carl Anthony Towns, which is opening up value. Uh, as well as usage for other players on Minnesota who don't normally have it. Uh, Houston against Memphis. And we also have Russ Westbrook sitting out that game, which is going to open up value and more usage for guys that are behind him, as well as usage for James Harden in situations like we saw last year when they did not have uh, a second superstar on the team. Philly against Phoenix. Philly obviously playing without Joel Embiid, who was suspended. Again, same situation, opening up extra usage for players on that team and minutes uh, in the front court as they have those 96 minutes to play between power forward and center. So that's going to bump the minutes for some of the other players there. And Portland goes to Golden State. Again, injury situations that Golden State is dealing with. Steph Curry out. Draymond Green probably not going to play that game as well. We got what I like to call a value tsunami about to hit us on this Monday night slate. And there's a lot of different ways that we can go. There is a ton of value. I'm expecting an extremely high scoring night on DraftKings. And if you want to keep up with all of it as best you possibly can right before lock, my suggestion to you is to go check out the work that they do over at dailyroto.com. There is a link right down below in the description. Click that link. It'll take you to the site. You get 10% off at checkout if you use the link or if you just use my promo code SMIZLIFE at checkout. Do a great job with their projections. Their optimizer is top notch. Uh, and the alerts that they send out to you before lock, just game changing. Uh, anytime news breaks and news does break in NBA, they give you an email alert that lets you know not just what the news was, but how it affects the slate and how it changes things uh, with the value and the studs and everybody else. So their suggestions, great to keep you if you're somebody who works a nine to five job and doesn't have time to research this all day long. They do a great job of keeping you abreast of everything that's going on up until lock. Now, the one suggestion that I make for you here in playing Daily Fantasy NBA is that it's way different from NFL, way different from MLB. You have to be way more nimble meaning that you need to be at your workstation 30 to 45 minutes before lock. Do not set it and forget it. This first look that I do, I like to take a look at some of the values that I think are the most important on the board for Monday night. And then I also pick two studs that I think I'm going to try and hang my hat on, guys that I think maybe have the best points for dollar, best, best chance for upside, best chance for triple doubles, double double bonuses, monster nights uh, in terms of usage or 40 point games. That's how I like to start these lineups out. I'm never here to give you a lineup. So if that's what you're looking for, Go find somebody else who does not have success in this game or has never had success in this game and just is looking for your clicks. I am here to try and help you learn how to play the game. We've had some people have some great success recently, both in NFL and in NBA with the new season that's just started. So let's get down to this slate and see what we can do. Uh, we're going to start. Let's just start with all the guys that are available in the utility spot. As I said, six games on this slate. Some of them are going to be high scoring. Most, I mean, it's the NBA, so most games are high scoring. But that's just the nature of the game right now. Giannis Antetokounmpo going up against Minnesota, but this is not the same Minnesota team without Cat in the middle. They're going to play a little bit differently. Giannis is in play any night that he takes the floor for me, but the price has really bumped up now to 11.3 after being at 10.7, 10.9, 10.8, 10.6. Uh, he can pay off this 11-3 for you. I think that he's a tournament play. Uh, if you want to play him in your head-to-head -head lineups and your cash game lineups, I'm not going to tell you not to. I just think that there's better options tonight with the other players that are out. So Giannis can have that ceiling game for you, can get you that 70-80 points. I'm not saying it's impossible. It's just that it's less probable than other players that are priced a little bit cheaper. Now, I mentioned that we have multiple people out. We've got Carl Anthony Towns out because of the fight with Joel Embiid. We also have Russ Westbrook sitting out this game. And when you factor in the amount of usage that James Harden had last year in games where Chris Paul sat out, and now you've seen the usage that Russ Westbrook has running most of the one with this Houston Rockets squad right now and James Harden playing off the ball as primarily a scorer. Now he's going to have the ball in his hands in the one spot for this MDA offense that we've seen this movie play out before. We've seen him average over 
10 assists a game. We've seen his usage rate well over 30 to 35%. We've seen how efficient he has been at scoring the basketball and getting to the free throw line. Uh, and he does leave air for other players and does create for other players. So when I get the step down in pricing, that 500 coming from uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo down to James Harden at 10-8 with no Russ Westbrook there, if Westbrook was playing this game, I'd probably say, you know what, him and Giannis are a toss-up. But without him there, Harden becomes the clear-cut play for me uh, between the two of them if you're paying up. Now, I said that this slate does have a lot of value on it. Uh, Andre Drummond is an absolute rebounding machine right now with three straight 2020 games back to back to back. Um, and now he's finally priced up at a point where we have to really think about playing him. Power forward and center is not as deep tonight as it would be on most other nights with this slate because of the, you know, because Carl Anthony Towns is going to be missing this slate because Joel Embiid is going to be missing this slate. But if we take a look at the center position, and without Draymond Green playing on this slate, uh, it immediately thins out the center spot. Uh, Whiteside is questionable. I believe the early reports are that it's leaning towards more probable. Uh, more probable. Al Horford, though, is somebody that I think that we can look at for value if you want the center spot tonight. Uh, with the price that he's at at only 6,900, looks like it's gonna be a pretty nice price for this. Considering that Joel Embiid is out, his minutes should be secure at 30 to 35. His usage should also come up, uh, which makes him a good pivot off of Drummond if you don't want to pay up for Drummond at center. Uh, some of the other players available on this that I mentioned that New Orleans, we want to stream against New Orleans pretty much as much as we can, as often as we can. Kyrie Irving uh, is going to get as much offense as he can handle, and you know that he's going to get his 20 shots. You know that he has a chance at getting 10 assists. Uh, the fact that he got that triple-double against Detroit is phenomenal, but I'm not expecting a triple-double from Kyrie Irving rebounds. Though he has rebounded more, uh, you know, seven against Indy and seven against Memphis, it's not really his forte to be a rebounding guard. Priced at 9,500, still palatable because of, to me, because of the matchup with New Orleans. Uh... Dame Lillard against Golden State. Can Golden State keep this game competitive is really the question that I have here. Uh, with as many injuries as they've suffered, they're looking like a lottery team. They were looking almost like a lottery team with Steph and Dre, and now with Steph and Dre out uh, and D'Lo being the guy running the show, this could get ugly and cap the upside for specific players in this game in terms of minutes. If he gets his high 30s minutes like he normally logs, great. But if he only plays 28 to 32, it's going to be a different story for Damian Lillard at 8,900, at least from where I sit. Ben Simmons is going to see extra usage, and that's always a good thing, considering how much of a machine he has been over the past few years. And his numbers are a little bit depressed so far early in this season in rebounding and assists from where they have been previously, uh, chipping in great in the steals column and in the blocks column uh, so far this season. But I think we're going to see more attacking Ben Simmons on Monday night at 8,500. I think he's a great play with a chance to double-double and possibly an outside chance to triple-double in this game uh, against Phoenix, which has a total of 223 and is expected to be extremely competitive with Philly favored by just one point there. So let's get to the three value plays. That's uh, my breakdown on most of the studs in the slate. Yes, there's other guys that we could talk about, but Let's look at the value plays that we can talk about to try and free ourselves up. And as I said, there's an absolute tsunami of value. So I'm going to start with Georgie Deng. And he is going to be the first guy that we talk about with the amount of minutes that he is now going to play in the absence of Carl Anthony Towns and priced at only 3,300. This is going to be an absolute slam dunk for you at the power forward or the center spot. This is why I don't think we have to slam Andre Drummond into lineups, but you can if you plug Deng into the power forward spot. You can get all the rebounds, all the minutes, all the, the, the points scored, everything else, the blocks, the steals, and have that amazing floor for only 3,300. Now, we've said it before, minutes equals money, right? So if a player like Deng is priced uh, as though he's going to play six, seven, eight minutes, but you expect that he might play... 22 to 26 minutes all of a sudden somebody with his ability becomes almost a free square i didn't say he's a free square but if he is starting and you expect 24 to 28 minutes from him tomorrow night 
he sure does appear to be one for only 3300 I would assume that he would have should have been priced somewhere around 45 to 48 so we're getting a massive discount. You have to be really price sensitive in terms of NBA, uh, way more so than in baseball or way more so than in NFL. My second value play, another one where we're dealing with uh, an injury situation. Derrick Rose not expected to play. Langston Galloway's best skill set that he brings to the floor is his ability to score the basketball. He is going to be playing with the second unit for Detroit. Only 3,200 double-digit points in three straight games. Yes, minutes equals money, but the number one correlation between real life and fantasy scoring is your ability to put the ball in the basket, and that is what Langston Galloway brings to the table. It is his number one skill on a basketball court is being able to score, and if he's going to be on the floor and being able to be with that second unit playing that Derrick Rose role where they're expecting him and demanding him to be a guy who attacks the rim and tries to score, as well as being able to contribute from behind the arc... 3,200 is just too cheap. We need, what, 17 to 20 fantasy points to uh, to pay off this salary, to be happy with this, to be able to pay up for the, the studs on the, the slate that we want to go attack. Last three games, he's done just that with 26, 23, and 28 minutes with 20, 19, and 22 fantasy points. He's my second. He's a plug-and-play for me. You can also plug him into the shooting guard spot if that's where you prefer. Lots of roster flexibility this evening because of the value that's out there. And because Westbrook is out, Eric Gordon is going to take a step forward as well, both in terms of minutes and usage. Uh, Gordon's best ability is his ability to score. They're going to have to lean on that a little bit more with Russ Westbrook out. He should be able to get some open looks around the three-point line off of James Harden drive and kicks. He should be able to have the ball in his hands on some wing pick and rolls as well uh, with the first and the second unit. At 4K, we need about 22 to 26 points for him to satisfy uh, us in terms of value. We have not seen him without Russ Westbrook yet this year, but this is where he sits typically in games where he is the secondary scoring option or the third scoring option for the Houston Rockets. I'm very comfortable plugging him in at that spot and my number one stud on the night it's going to be James Harden he's where I want to start for all the reasons that we talked about before no Westbrook great chance at a double double excellent chance at a triple double uh he's going to get as many shots as his arm can hang on to so 30 plus shots 25 plus shots with a possibility of 30 shots possible as many trips to the line as he can force fouls from his opponents that are trying to defend him and if his three-point shot can fall with the consistency that it fell against washington as opposed to what he's seen in other games uh the sky's the limit on monday night for james harden so I'm plugging him in at 10-8. My second stud also talked about the increased usage for Ben Simmons with Joel Embiid out. Another player that can get me a double-double and possibly a triple-double here as well. 8,500 is just too cheap considering the situation. Uh, Multi-positional eligibility as well with guard, forward, point guard, small forward, and utility. Five spots that I could plug him into. And that's my five guys. Three value plays, Galloway, Gordon, and Deng. And Simmons and Harden are my two studs for the evening. That's my first look. If you like the video, please drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you ring that notifications bell because I come out with a ton of content throughout the week. And join me live on Twitch. There's a link down below in the pinned comment. That's where I can get to know you much better than in the comment section. If I've helped you out, drop a comment. Let me know who your top stud play is on Monday night. And until the next video, I'll catch you later. Bye. He's a legend.